Hello and welcome to Dave's Delightful Dishes. As always, I'm Dave and it is such a delight to have you here visiting me today in my kitchen. And today is a special day because it's the spring holidays. Whether you're celebrating Passover or Maundy Thursday, one of the things that have that is kind of common is some kind of a feast. Uh, and in this case, I'm going to be doing answering some questions people had for me about uh, some of the items for a Passover Seder. So let's check it out. So I make some uh, pretty good horseradish, and it's one of the biggest questions people ask me is, like, you know, how do you get your horseradish so fresh and so uh, powerful? So first off, you start with the root, and I have a whole, well, a whole batch of ingredients, i.e. three ingredients to be able to make good horseradish. And you'll see them here. Now, I use a food processor. First thing I'm gonna do is I've washed those roots and now I'm going to uh, peel them so that they'll be nice and clean and ready to go into the food processor. So let's head over to the sink and we're going to uh, cut ourselves some horseradish. All right, now this is pretty straightforward, but horseradish have got all kinds of bumps and lumps and stuff on them. So what we have to do is just get all the brown off until we got nice, clean, white root. And uh, try not to do this too close to your face because this absolutely puts off uh, a very potent aroma. Clean the end off. And where it gets knobby here, it gets a little bit trickier. But again, just like uh, cutting, a, just like peeling a carrot or a potato, <laughs> just ah, this is a carrot that bites back. And then I just go up along the top there and get that top little dirty section cleaned up. And as you can see, now I got a pretty clean root. Okay, so now that it is cleaned and washed, and I gave them a quick little dry off just so, I'm not, so they're not soaking wet, this is now gonna go into my food processor. And I'm gonna go into my, uh, uh, my grind setting. There we go. And as you can see, this makes a nice grind, which is a start. We need to get that first. So I'm going to go ahead and finish processing this up, and I'll get back to you for the next step. Okay, so now that we have uh, done the initial grind, we are going to add this back to the food processor with the regular blade on it. And you may notice a little something going on in me here. Well, I've learned the hard way that as I start processing this horseradish, everything that comes out of here is basically mace. So my scuba mask does a really good job of keeping me from breaking down in tears. So this has to uh, gently go in. You can also just ch chunk this up with the knife, but I find that now that I know how to use my food processor, it's amazing how much easier this is this way. It adds one step, but it's a very fast step. All right, so all that's in there. And I'm going to add in about a tablespoon's worth of salt. Uh, a little bit more. And i got to start off by grinding this. So here we go. And now I've got white vinegar. And there's no set amount of this. You just have to kind of pour some in. And you can see this changing. 
and they'll go to stop and have a quick look, add a little bit more. We're just trying to turn this from a solid to more like a paste, but still be big and chunky. Yeah, there we go. It's sticking to the sides. And uh, this is where it's really nice that I do not have a uh, um, this one big piece that decided not to grind up. We're just going to put that aside. I got plenty in here. Ha -ha. Push these sides down. And I'm not going to try to smell this yet. <laughs> I will do that once I get it where I want it. So I'll put the lid back on. Back to the... So that was about six ounces of white vinegar. And now this stuff is ready to go. Oh yeah, and oh is it. Whew. So we gotta put this in a jar and now that I've completely maced myself, I'll see you guys back in a minute. All right, so it's as simple as not getting this anywhere near your face, and just filling a mason jar with this ground horseradish. But there's still one more step. All right, I'm gonna finish getting this filled up and then we'll pop back in so I can show you the final piece. Okay, so keep this away from your face and I'm not kidding. You get that? And the final step is, this is pretty dry right now. It, did, it absorbs that, that vinegar right away. So I want to get this with white vinegar, now that it's in the jar, I'm watching, and I want it to fill up about three quarters of the way. And that is going to get all the heat just maximized. Get a lid on it, give it a nice shake and a pop, and then this is ready for use. Uh, let that sit in the refrigerator overnight for maximum potency, and then watch out. I've had people say, oh, I know horseradish, no problem, and then be uh, very surprised by this when they, when they try it. Uh, you don't overdo it with the salt, but other than that, it's three ingredients, quick and easy, and uh, this is good for darn near anything you would use horseradish for. And you can get the horseradish at your market. This is quick, this is easy, it's inexpensive, and it is way better than any canned or jarred product you can find. So that's number one. The next item is called is called harosit. It's kind of like a fruit chutney, fruit and honey, and some usually some wine. Uh, and it represents in the Passover seder. It represents the mortar used to hold bricks together, or used to make bricks, depending on who you ask. Uh, and it is delicious. Everybody does it a little bit different. And the way that I like to do it is, again, with a food processor. So we're going to use these ingredients. So we're going to take all these ingredients, and they're going to go in the food processor. And we're going to grind that down until it's like a nice, uh, <laughs> almost like an applesauce. So we're going to start with two apples that have been chopped and cored. In this case, I'm using Pink Ladies, but you can use whichever ones you like. I wouldn't go with one that's too tart, though. And then I have apricots. It's a quarter cup. And same thing with prunes. And a little bit more than a quarter cup, but basically, again, you can go by quarter cups and add more as you like it. Uh, cranberries, raisins, and since I saw them at the store, Zante currants. Any dried fruit you can find will be good for this. And then putting in two tablespoons of uh, kind of like broken up walnut pieces. Uh, you can use whatever nut you want, but believe me, you don't want it to put too much nut in, otherwise that's all you'll taste. And the, uh, you know, depending on who you have at your have at your event, at your event, you may or may not be able to use uh, almonds because a lot of people or any other nuts, depending on nut allergies. In which case, just avoid them. Yeah, they're unnecessary. They just add a little extra thing to the flavor. I need this guy because I have two tablespoons of honey. There we go. And a teaspoon 
of ground cinnamon. And then finally, I've got a half cup of grape juice. And this, there's only really only one, normally I don't talk brands, but there's only one that makes it taste right to me, and that's Kadem. So if you can't find that, then use whatever you want. But you'll find that the best flavor comes from these guys right here. Now that half a cup, that's arbitrary, because we might have to, we might need to add more as we're grinding. Now it should have, still have some consistency. You don't want it to be like truly applesauce, but right now this is still way too thick. So we're gonna grind this down and just keep on grinding until it's more like a, a little bit more like a paste. And if I need to add more juice, I can. Now, one of the things that you do not have the benefit of that I do is I know what this is supposed to taste like. But I can see it's still a little dry. So it goes a little bit more juice. That's one of those you can't really measure it. You have to feel it. There we go. So you can see it now it's coming down off of the walls and becoming more like a chutney down the bottom. A little bit more because I still got some big apple pieces, but that's starting to smell right. I'm just going to slide my walls down. And this is just about there. A couple of big apple pieces left that need to get grinded up. Ground up. <laughs> There we go, and that's looking like what I'm used to seeing. And I believe we're done here. And if I, if I end up having to do more, I'll just get a new one of these. Oh yeah, that's perfect. It's sweet, you can still taste the grape juice, all the fruits are coming together, and then you're gonna make this at least the day before. So the flavors will blend overnight, and it'll get even better. All right. So I'll get right back to you. We're gonna get this into a jar. And just like that, you know, you got, now you have two jars ready for whenever you need them. They're good for the holiday. They're good enough for any day. Think about this with a piece of roast beef or with a sandwich or any other reason you might also, you might need horseradish. And then this stuff, man, this is just a great, like a, think of it as a fruit compote. You can use it on toast. You can use it as a side. Uh, it's, it goes great on top of things. This is good to have in the fridge. Now it doesn't keep very well, so you got to kind of make it and then use it, but it's good enough and easy enough to make that you could use it anytime you like. And my goodness, aren't they delightful? So I would like you guys to, uh, let me know if you try this, especially the horseradish. Let me know how bad it, how bad it, bad it clears your sinuses. It's uh, excellent for that particular topic. And any other challenges or questions you have for me, feel free to give them to me in, either in comments here on the, here on YouTube or on my Facebook page for Dave's Delightful Dishes, which you'll see uh, linked in the description, as well as my Instagram. Those are all good places to contact me, check out my pictures, uh, maybe check out my merch on my Spreadshirt app, so maybe you'd like a new apron or uh, maybe some mugs. I've got all kinds of neat stuff that you should check out. But anyhow, I hope you enjoy this. Let me know if you made it. Send me pictures. And until then, try like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you at the next recipe. And the next recipe is my 100th episode, so look and watch. It should be fun. <laughs>